welcome back. This is another evening with Ethan. My name is Ethan Von Real, and we're getting into some more Ridley practice, and I'm giving you that good gay content that you always love to hear, so let's get into it. So I actually bothered thinking up a topic for tonight. This time it's going to be situational awareness, <laughs> um, because that's very important both in video games and then also in real life, and you'll see what I mean here. So we're going to start off by talking about this matchup. So pop... I almost called her Politan, I'm racist. Uh, how do I say this? Uh, Rosalina, she's not bad, but she is nowhere near as good as she was in Smash 4. Um, at least at this point, to my knowledge. Now, I think part of the issue is that not a lot of people really play her anymore, which I guess could be cyclical. People aren't playing her because she's fucking uh, a load of potatoes. Or, alternatively, their third eyes just aren't woke enough to appreciate that she's secretly... A little good. But anyway, um, in this match I actually work on practicing a lot of situational awareness, so something a lot of people don't realize in Super Smash Bros. is that knowing combos is not really the heart of gameplay. It's really having good spacing and awareness of what options your enemy has, especially if you're playing a low tier character. There's some characters, like, you can just roll your face up on that controller all day, and you can basically just do whatever you want <laughs> against certain people. Um, but with most of the cast, you really just need to be aware of where you're at and what the enemy can do and how you can uh, fill in the gaps in their approach, um, which is basically just a way of describing, you know, getting in while playing a neutral. But... In this case, I don't actually know the matchup against Rosalina that well. She uh, is not played that often, and I never fucking see her on Wi-Fi. So I basically have to pull things together while I'm playing, and you can see me just kind of eating a lot of neutral airs, but I start adapting as the match goes further. I do have a lead right now, obviously, but basically I just kind of think about how Rosalina plays and what her range is and I use that in order to kind of think of options to get in on her. Again you do see me make mistakes but the thing I want to emphasize is that I grow over the course of the match and get better at um, not getting punished as much and then also just being able to take her out. Something I really hate <laughs> and um it just kind of makes me cringe while I'm watching it, is when players play very scripty, and what I mean by that is that they basically play like they're reading off a script or a how-to guide rather than like actually think about what's going on in the match. So you'll see some people I've played against, especially when I'm streaming, they'll basically use the same several moves over and over again, they'll use them in the same situation all the time, they'll never mix anything up, and it's basically like they're a computer program playing a character. They do X in this situation, then they follow up with Y and then Z, and then if it works, it works. If it doesn't, they lose, <laughs> basically. And you'll notice that that's actually very common in a lot of competitive games. Like, League of Legends players is, like, really bad about that. Um, which isn't... Like, it's not... I don't want to say it's inherently bad, because you can succeed doing that. But the thing is, is when you play against someone who does have that situational awareness, it's just like you just kind of lose very aggressively against them, if that makes sense. Basically, you can script and beat the shit out of bad people, but if you, uh... Is this interesting to hear me talk about? Is this, is this gay enough, Mom? <laughs> I, get, I get a little passionate about this. Anyway, basically, if you're playing against someone who has, like, a few extra brain cells to use to think about the situation that the game is taking place in, um, and they're not brute-forcing things, you're gonna get your feelings hurt a little bit, unless you're playing someone who's just so good that you can roll your face on the controller and win. But anyway, um, how this relates to gay shit... Well, I'll tell you, I, I'm not just making this up, but um, this actually completely relates to gay shit because a lot of times gays will tend to brute force social interaction. I mean, all people do, right, in some situations, but I think a lot of gay people have very limited social interaction because of uh, homophobia, basically. Like, if you're an awkward little gay nerd and you didn't really get to have too many friends because they were like, I don't want to hang out with this fucking faggot. Um, then in that situation, 
you wouldn't necessarily have a lot of the social um, prerequisites you would need to basically know how to navigate social situations. So when that happens, <laughs> um, a lot of people end up basically just having one like thing or social way they interact with people that they use and then they never adapt. <laughs> so like a really common one is a lot of guys will basically just be sexual and make sexual jokes and that's like all they can do. That's the only way they know how to interact with people in a social situation or more specifically gay people. This is like really common, like this is something you can think about if you've ever like tried to have like an adult ass conversation with someone who is gay, who um like you've met on like Grinder or whatever, just whatever medium you have. They just have a lot of trouble just not making innuendos and just they just don't know how to do it. And the reason for that is they're basically brute forcing the social interaction and not really thinking about the situation it takes place in. Um, also, spoilers, I am going to get fucked up by this little green monster. Mega Man is very hard to beat for me in particular, and he's double hard to beat on Wi-Fi. Um, as always, if they're ranged and they have projectiles, it's very hard to punish them. But anyway, um, if you've ever encountered that, basically where someone, you're like interacting with a gay... And for whatever reason, like, you're trying to have a normal conversation and they just keep turning it sexual no matter what you do, um, feel free to leave a comment or something and tell me about your experience with that because that is, like, a big pet peeve of mine. I hate when guys do that. Um, and I'll just flat out say, can you, can you not? <laughs> like, can you, can you grow up, please? Like, we're not um, cheering anymore. But again, I say the reason that that happens is that they don't necessarily have the social skills to know how to interact with people otherwise. I mean, I mean, and obviously some of it is that, of course, they're fucking horny. But even you'll notice that it's like constantly also, I just stabbed the shit out of that kid. You fuck nerd. I start actually coming back a little bit incidentally, um, which I was very proud of. I started adapting and being a little bit more situationally aware of how to deal with these situations. Like, he had basically been leading off and trying to run in and shuriken me, or using Mega Man's up tilt to kill me, and I just kind of adapted around that, and that let me punish him a good bit. Got him. Yeah. So, um, I guess I could think of some more examples where people try to brute force. Um, nerds are really bad about this. When it's an interest they have, well, they'll turn the conversation about some sort of interest they have, no matter what the fuck you're talking about. Um, like, I met this one dude who basically, like, if we were having a conversation about anything in a group setting, he would just turn it towards whatever fucking anime he was into, and it drove me bazonkers, because we could just be, like, having a conversation about, like, you know, like, personal, like, stuff like oh man i'm really looking to get out of this job or oh i don't know if i'm gonna really graduate and he would just be like anime xd and it, he's just not just not adapting bro and it's just kind of like a script like i could basically predict when he would um bring up anime in some capacity and i i could just like literally feel it <laughs> but I just like talking about stuff like that because I think it just has a lot of implications. Um, I think I'm going to do okay in this matchup. I don't remember. I'm pretty sure I'm going to beat the Samus, but we'll see. This is incidentally also a very hard matchup for Ridley, but I uh, kind of know how to play into it a bit. I think better than this Zero Suit Samus understands how to play into Ridley. Also, her spacing isn't super good. I don't remember if I gave her a bro stock. I did. Because I'm woke. Alright, let's see if she can come back. Anyway. Um. What the fuck were we talking about, Mom? What were we doing? Something. Something gay juice. XD. Ethan Bon Real. Gay stuff. Yada yada. Um. Oh, yeah. I, I was just talking about this basically because it's relevant to my interests and my thoughts lately. I think my other thing, too, is like. You know, I was looking at Ask Gay Bros, and a lot of topics basically are kind of like that, where someone's asking a question not because they want to actually know something, but basically so that they can start talking about a fetish they have. 
Um, like, there's this one dude who made a post a while ago, and the post was basically like, oh, how do you get really big pecs? I love them. And then people were giving, like, legitimate advice. And he basically just ignored all of that to just basically rave on about how he loved big-ass pecs. And I realized the re real issue is this nerd wasn't planning on going to the gym ever. What he really wanted to do, basically, was just talk about his love of big pecs with other people. Because he was horny for them. Um, and I saw that he did stuff like that, like, throughout his post history. Like, no matter what was going on in a thread, it would just end up being about some fetish he had. And it's just, it's annoying. <laughs> That's why I always say, like, being horny rots your brain a little bit. Because it's just like, I think you forget other people might not also be horny while you're horny. So they don't necessarily want to talk about the same shit. Anyway, we're going to crank it back here and talk more about Super Smash Bros. Um, TLDR, the Zero Suit Samus, not very super great spacing. Um, what she really should be doing is spacing out with Zier, but she's not doing that very successfully. I also notably was playing pretty well that night, <laughs> um, and my internet connection was fucking good as hell, so... I think the other issue is she's not playing as mobile as I am, which is kind of funny. Um, she's like sitting in place and not really using um, short hops um, aggressively enough. So when I say short hops aggressively, I don't mean like literally killing me with short hops, but she's not like keeping up her movement to look for options. She basically runs at me, short hops, runs back away, short hops, runs back away, short hops to get back in and tries to do something instead of like maintaining a position with her short hops and with her gameplay. Which is why I fucked her up so bad, because I was ready to drag my uh, dragon beak all over her face and give her a good old chomping. But I think that situational awareness is just a very useful skill, and, you know, I, I bring it up not only because I just needed a topic to talk about, because I didn't have one last, <laughs> last episode, but I think it just, it's one of those connections I see between my personal life and my gaming life, which I guess are basically the same thing, because that's all I really do in my free time, but... Um, I like to see those kind of comparisons, and as I said um, previously a, a long time ago in one of my first Earthbound videos, is that I think that, honestly, I think that learning competitive gaming principles can actually really just make you a better person and make you a lot happier. Also, heads up, I am going to fuck up this Squirtle. I play so good in this match, like, I'm just jumping on that ho. <laughs> He's, like, legit gonna rage quit a Squirtle, incidentally, because of how well I play. Like that. Now, I did fuck that up. I was trying to skewer him out of that, but... Oh, shit. It's Ivasaur. I'm screaming. I was gonna try to skewer him out of it, but I fucked up. I don't even know how many of y'all are actually, like, watching the screen while I do this. But we'll see. <laughs> I felt so good by doing that, because I intentionally did it, too. Part of the issue, or why I was even able to uh, succeed at that, is because Squirtle players always play very scripty against Ridley. Like, they just use their side B very wantonly. Which causes them a lot of issues. Even though that's objectively, like, way in Squirtle's favor, in my opinion. Like, Squirtle's always in danger of dying, but... It's very easy for him just to juggle Ridley like a sack of dragon potatoes. So, continuing where I was saying, I think that, you know, competitive gaming principles can help you make a... make you be a better person. If you want them to be. That doesn't always work out, uh, because there are plenty of really rancid competitive gamers out there. And in fact, there are a lot, a lot, I would say. I don't want to say most, but it's, like, so common that the community has a reputation for it. But I just think that, like, you know, adapting the ideas of, um, you know, situational awareness and min-maxing can help you improve yourself as a person, and I really appreciate that. Which is why I always say, even though, you know, I, I typically end up playing characters that are low-tier or not really competitively viable, 
I always say that, you know, for me, competitive gaming really is about the principles you play with, not necessarily what your actual rank and accomplishments are. If you strive to improve and you don't settle basically for, how do I say this? You don't settle for, you just don't settle. <laughs> And you're, you're focused on continual improvement and adapting your knowledge to uh, better succeed, then I think that is inherently competitive. Because some pe there are a lot of people who just roll their faces on the controllers, and then if they win, they win, and if they lose, they just complain <laughs> or stop playing. And that's just not my uh, thing. You'll notice in this match I actually have some trouble dealing with the Squirtle, um, because I always underestimate how I'm... Um, much air Squirtle travels while um, short hopping. Also, this matchup is satanic as hell. This Bulbasaur knows how to camp, <laughs> and by that I mean they realize that Ridley's a fucking terrible character that has trouble dodging projectiles. You do notice though, I, I am getting some dodges in, but it's not quite enough. That's just there's very little risk for this. I almost called him Bulbasaur, I'm racist. Uh, this Ivasaur in this matchup. As long as he uh, just keeps camping and is patient, he can really just space me out constantly. And you'll see, I'm like, I'm dodging these very well. I'm not getting hit. It just, he doesn't really have many op opportunities for me not to... Uh, Pardon me, he doesn't really have many opportunities to get damaged. It's just very easy for me to get fucked up. <laughs> Satanic. Charizard is also really obnoxious to play against as Ridley, because Flare Blitz just fucks him up really bad. Ow, my feelings. I'm trying to think of something else gay uh, to wedge in here before the time is up. Um, you know, one of my things that I've noticed, especially with young gays, is, like, when they're interested in a, a guy, and it's not working, what they'll do is they'll try to brute force the situation. They'll basically be like, how do I make this guy love me? And they don't realize that, like, I mean, obviously this is the corny answer, but it's also the real answer. You really just have to be yourself, and the more you freak out and try to force that person being into you the less likely you are to get them to like you, because they're going to keep wanting to reassert their boundaries. Um, and they just don't want to hear that, <laughs> basically. And I understand completely. That's not, like, a fun thing to hear. Ooh. There we go. I got him. I don't remember if I win or not. Fuck Ivasaur. Literally. Oh my god, please get away from me. This is like activating my fight or flight reflex. This fucking cabbage just is obsessed with trying to kill me. Oh my god, please. <laughs> I just want to be alive, dude. Stop throwing leaves at me. <laughs> what the fuck? Ugh. This is like stressing me out really bad. I'm not getting hit though, because I'm fucking good at this game. But man, fuck Ivasaur, dude. God damn it. Get away from me! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I'm screaming. This is like really exciting to watch. <laughs> I don't remember if I win or not. I, I I mean the video has like another two oh spoilers, don't don't hear that. The video has some time to it, so Oh well you can see the fucking uh time bar. Am I gonna win? Oh my fucking god. <laughs> oh my god oh wait, no 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 don't kill me. Am I gonna win? Oh, I'm dead. God damn it. I'm tilted. I thought I was gonna win this stupid ass match. <laughs> God damn it. Man, fuck Ivasaur. This is stupid. Oh, you know what? I was going to follow up and say that, you know, one of the things I've also observed is a lot of young gays that kind of like are behaving like I was talking about, where they're trying to brute force someone into liking them. 
is that they'll try to constantly hang around someone to get them to like them, but they don't realize that that's actually doing the opposite. <laughs> because they're so focused on trying to get that person to like them that they're only thinking of one way to do it by hanging out. And then that doesn't work, but they keep doing it <laughs> because they're not being situationally aware. Like, a lot of times in that kind of situation, there are a lot of clues that that person doesn't want to keep hanging out and that they want some space. And that doesn't necessarily mean that they, um, also I just teabagged the shit out that twank, fuck you. Um, that doesn't mean that they don't like you, it just means that they need space because they're another human being. <laughs> and they just don't want to believe that. It's very sad. But it's a lesson you either have to learn, or alternatively, you get a persecution process or a complex because of it. Also, man, he is so mad. <laughs> Incidentally, this is going to be my last Super Smash Bros. video for uh, my evening with Ethan for a bit. Because I recorded all of these at the same time. Oh, man. Also, I'm like playing a little bit. Shitty. I think it's because I'm mentally checked out in this match, because I already am uh, too ahead. Whoa. Nope. Shulk is actually very irritating to play against, incidentally. Feels bad, Mom. Is he gonna live? He did live but not for long. Anyway, that was me, Ethan Bond Real, Ethan Bond beating the shit out that dude. So uh, I hope you have a good night. This is the end of this episode. Bye. <laughs>